you will find that the birds are going to move, right? Um, and what I do is, if I'm drawing a real bird, it's not going to sit in one position like this forever. So what I'll do is I'll start one drawing, and then the bird moves. He goes, oh, you're drawing me, and it'll move. Now, if you say to yourself, hey, I'm just going to wait till you come back to that other position, somehow they can tell. <laughs> they are never going to draw back into that position. So what you want to do is you got to outsmart them. Right? So clever primate, you start this drawing, and the bird moves. You go, oh, all right. I'm going to start a new drawing right next to that on the piece of paper. of what I'm seeing in this new pose. Oh, now it moves again. All right. Now I'm going to start another drawing over here. All right. Now the bird moves again, but this time it pops back to a pose you've already seen. I'm going to jump back into that drawing and continue working on it. All right. And if it moves again, I jump back to an old drawing. Right? If it flies away, I can see what's still kind of logged for a little bit in my memory. Usually I'll have some relevant stuff there for, I don't know, 30 seconds. Yeah. Right? Maybe less. Probably less. Right? But the drawing that you get the furthest along on is going to be the most characteristic posture of that bird. These are not bird portraits. You don't have to finish any of them. They're just a way to invite you to look more deeply and more carefully while you're out there in the field. And if you do that, nature is going to start revealing secrets to you that have always been hiding just beyond the point where you stop observing. And for many of us, that's the point at which we've identified it. Right? If you've seen birders do this, they're going, oh my gosh, that's, that's glorious. That's a, what a wonderful bird. And somebody says, lousily bunting. And they go, oh, cool, lousily bunting. What's that over there? <laughs> right? So as if the most important thing we're supposed to be doing with this encounter with wildness is trying to come up with a name that the American Ornithological Union has decided goes with this species. There's a lot more going on in that real thing. And drawing it is the most powerful way that I know to make myself look again and again and again at those things that I think I know. The more that I do that, the more I constantly discover secrets that even the most common birds, the house finch, the house sparrow, the brewer's blackbird, has to teach me about this little piece of DNA that's been spying on me through time and the world opens itself to you.